Secretary of State Mike Pompeo works hard at being President Trump's most loyal cabinet member and greatest evangelist of America First, but the world is pushing back. Warsaw, in the eyes of Mike Pompeo, the day was shaping up to be one of his most commanding displays of diplomacy since becoming Secretary of State. Months of planning had finally yielded a meeting among reluctant European officials, Arab leaders and the Israeli Prime Minister to strategize over confronting Iran. Then, in a lunchtime speech, Vice President Mike Pence shattered the fragile unity, addressing the officials as they met this month in Warsaw. Mr. Pence denounced the United States' closest allies, Britain, France and Germany, for coddling Iran's murderous revolutionary regime. He demanded they stop undermining American-led sanctions and follow President Trump in renouncing a nuclear deal the Europeans were trying to save. Privately, Mr. Pompeo briefly erupted. Aides said he complained Mr. Pence had undermined diplomacy, which one European official said included near agreement about imposing new sanctions on Iran's ballistic missile tests, and prompted fresh headlines about transatlantic tensions. But publicly, Mr. Pompeo never voiced his anger, keeping relations with the White House stable. Almost a year into his job, Mr. Pompeo, 55, has managed to pull off what few other Trump-era senior cabinet members have accomplished, staying in the president's good graces and wielding power without countering White House pronouncements or policies. Now he faces his greatest test. This week, Mr. Pompeo will accompany Mr. Trump to a summit meeting in Hanoi, Vietnam, to try to keep an effort to rid North Korea of its nuclear weapons from going off the rails. Mr. Pompeo must keep Mr. Trump, 72, from being duped by the North's wily leader, Kim Jong-un, who is half the president's age. He also needs to prevent the president from undermining the American negotiating position on denuclearization. After meeting with Mr. Kim in June in Singapore, Mr. Trump declared that the matter was largely solved and that there is no longer a nuclear threat from North Korea, contradicting American intelligence agencies, whose judgments the president largely ignores. In private discussions with Korea experts, Mr. Pompeo has conceded that he would be lucky if the North agreed to dismantle 60 percent of what the United States has demanded. But he said even that would be more than any other administration has achieved. Overall, Mr. Pompeo has been more of an evangelist for the president's America First approach than any other cabinet member. Whether he should serve as a megaphone for Mr. Trump in the White House, or be more strident in confronting the president over the uncomfortable realities of foreign policy, is now the central question of Mr. Pompeo's leadership of the United States diplomatic corps. Others in the administration wince at presidential tweets. Mr. Pompeo, a former Tea Party Republican congressman and CIA director, tells his staff to evaluate each one on whether it can be leveraged into something useful. Sometimes he works behind the scenes to try to contain the damage, but rarely drops any hint of his opposition in public. After Mr. Trump abruptly declared in December that the United States would soon withdraw its 2,000 troops from Syria, the defense secretary, Jim Mattis, resigned. But Mr. Pompeo told aides the withdrawal was the president's prerogative and defended it as a change in tactics, not in mission. Still, he is not always in step with Mr. Trump. He has pushed ahead with sanctions against Russia, and in Poland, he watched American and Polish troops in a live fire exercise near the Russian border, an unsubtle message to Moscow not to test the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. But generally, Mr. Pompeo, a strong partisan and ideologue and an evangelical Christian, aligns with Mr. Trump. In a scathing nationalistic speech in Brussels in December, Mr. Pompeo criticized institutions the United States helped create to maintain its global power, the United Nations, European Union, World Bank, International Monetary Fund and World Trade Organization. In a January speech in Cairo, Mr. Pompeo attacked the policies of President Barack Obama. There has been little, if any, precedent for such a broadside of former administrations from a sitting Secretary of State. Mr. Pompeo was widely criticized for it. By contrast, he praised President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, Egypt's repressive leader. He did the same with two other leaders who critics say have authoritarian tendencies, President Jair Bolsonaro of Brazil and Prime Minister Viktor Orban of Hungary. On major issues, the president is working to undermine us, and if Secretary Pompeo is supporting that, this is a fault, said R. Nicholas Burns, an under-secretary of state under President George W. Bush and a Harvard professor whom Mr. Pompeo has consulted.
He's an institutionalist, and he's done some things well, starting with rejuvenating the State Department after Rex Tillerson dismantled so much, Mr. Burns said, referring to the President's first Secretary of State. But on policy, he has been the voice of unilateralism, of our way or the highway, and he's discovering, just recently, that the world is pushing back. This article is based on conversations with more than two dozen current and former American officials, foreign diplomats and policy advisors, most of whom agreed to discuss Mr. Pompeo on the condition of anonymity. John R. Bolton, the national security advisor, sometimes expresses his own views and tries to bend policy, as he did on Syria, when he said American troops would stay as long as Iran had troops on Syrian soil. Mr. Trump quickly quashed that thought. By contrast, Mr. Pompeo unfailingly sticks to the presidential line. For example, he publicly refuses to acknowledge the intelligence agency's assessments, including those prepared by his former staff at the CIA, that contradict Mr. Trump on matters like North Korea, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the Islamic State. The president has rewarded Mr. Pompeo's loyalty by anointing him the point person on several signature issues. Those include North Korea and Afghanistan, a subject on which one American official said Mr. Pompeo and Mr. Trump speak directly to each other, sidelining Mr. Bolton. The American foreign policy establishment is ambivalent toward Mr. Pompeo, praising him for reinvigorating the diplomatic corps while criticizing him for his policies and ideology.